If you've ever been part of the Navajo Reservation, you must have heard of or even seen the blood-curdling creatures known as skinwalkers. I've lived in a small hamlet in northern Arizona that's positioned between the largest Navajo reservation in the U.S. to the south and the Paiute Reserve to the north. Throughout my life, I heard stories about people being chased by skinwalkers, but I never really believed in them. I was a school bus driver, and since the schools in my town were so small, they often had to take a five or ten hour drive towards the south for any kind of tournaments, which meant that I drove around the Navajo reservation a lot. Since the tournaments lasted at least for a day or two, the students and staff were made to stay in a hotel during the night. However, this time, the school decided to skip that part because of money. I didn't have a problem with being on the road for about 12 hours as long as I was paid fairly. So on this particular Wednesday, we headed out to the south in one of my favorite buses, Big Blue. The game was going to be held on the same day, and the students' zeal and zest were difficult to control. After a fantastic victory, we returned to the town, and the bus was completely quiet. I'd been driving for about two hours at this point. I looked at the back seats through the mirror and smiled, seeing all the students dozed off after their best efforts in the game. The road was empty and there wasn't a single vehicle in sight. I was relieved seeing this because the drive was going to be peaceful, but I didn't know that it was destined not to be peaceful. After driving for another hour, I decided to lower my pace slightly because my muscles started to tense. I leaned back in my seat to relax a bit, but I saw a glance of something odd running behind the bus. Right away, I lunged at the mirror and positioned it in a way so that I could get a better view of whatever it was. And when I did, my jaw dropped. It was a skinwalker on all fours chasing the bus. I blinked a few times to make sure whatever I saw was real it increased its pace and was inching closer and closer to the bus. I pressed my foot against the accelerator tightly for the sake of all the lives I had with me on the bus, and I sped the bus up. I was driving 85 miles an hour now, faster than ever before, with the kids on board. I glanced again at the side mirror and can still see the figure running behind at 85 miles an hour. It was apparent that whatever it was was humanoid, as it drew nearer to me. It resembled a person almost identically, but the only difference was that the face was covered half black and half white, and the eyes glowed. They reminded me of a rabbit and reflected spotlight illumination. The skinwalker approached the edge of the road and hurled pebbles and sagebrush as it rushed alongside the bus, all the while glaring at me. I had such a firm grip on my steering wheel that my knuckles turned white and my foot was constantly pressed to the accelerator. I diverted my focus back to the road, determined to escape the situation. When I looked back at the mirror, there was nothing to be seen, and silence once again occupied the entire bus. I was confused by the sudden disappearance and leaned closer to the side mirror, but again there was nothing to be seen, as if it had never been there. And that's when it dawned on me that it all could have been my imagination. I could have been hallucinating since I had been awake for more than 16 hours at that point. I looked back at the kids inside, seeing them peacefully sleeping. It made more sense that whatever just happened was inside my head because someone else would have spotted it if it were real. I relaxed a little and returned my pace to normal. My breaths were still heavy though because the creature looked exactly like other people had described it. The town wasn't that far away now. I predicted that it wouldn't be more than two hours and we would be back home. It helped calm me to know that I'd be home in some time where I could take a pill or two and sleep to shrug off all these traumatic experiences. It was about 7 in the morning when I parked in the school driveway. I got off the bus and lots of the kids followed me. I gave them all a smile, seeing them happy with their victory, but one kid caught my attention. As far as I can remember, he was the only male senior playing for the team at the time, and he was pumped with energy the whole night, but right now... He looked shocked and terrified. His face was flushed, and he repeatedly glanced at the back window. I got an uneasy feeling from how terror-stricken the kid looked, and was curious to know why. 
So when he got off the bus, I tapped on his shoulder and asked, with a smile, Hey, what's up, buddy? His eyes filled with tears to my shock, and he hugged me. I knew this was much more messed up than I thought, so I hurried the boy to a corner and offered him some water to help him relax. Once he had calmed down, he looked into my eyes and asked, Was it running behind the bus last night? I froze at this question. So it wasn't my imagination. Something was running behind the bus. There was a skinwalker chasing the bus. Was it a skinwalker? The boy's question snapped me out of my thoughts. I nodded in response, and what he told me next made shivers run down my spine. The boy explained how he made eye contact with it and how it consumed him. He described a disturbing smile and fixated gaze. He told me how the skinwalker started to collapse and crawl on all fours. I could see the skinwalker's bones breaking and reforming hair beginning to grow all over his body, and in about three seconds, the skinwalker had transformed into a coyote that had run across the desert, out of sight, the boy explained. But what troubled me the most was how the boy ended up puking a mixture of blood and food. If it was any other person telling me this story on any other day, I would have laughed it off, saying it was probably a nightmare. But this time, I stood frozen as panic grew inside me. The boy started tearing up again, so I hugged him again and assured him that it was all good, we're safe now. Later that day, I took the boy to the Navajo chief and explained to him what had happened the night before and what the boy had encountered. He looked concerned and waved a feathered object resembling a scepter and muttered something in Navajo over the boy and then asked him to leave. He turned to me, gave me a totem, and warned me always to keep it on my bus whenever I drive in or around the Navajo reservation. I accepted it but was confused, so I asked him, it's gone now, why do I have to keep this around all the time? He looked at me and sighed and then said, it remembers, son. It remembers your bus. It remembers you. It could come back any time. My blood ran cold at hearing this and I immediately departed from there after thanking the chief for his blessings. It's been about three years since this event occurred. I'm still a bus driver. However, now, I prefer driving during the day than during the night, specifically in the Navajo Reservation, because I'm not sure when it'll come running out of the dunes to chase me again. <laughs>